Welcome back everybody, it is another Q&A. But before I get to your questions, a couple of quick announcements. First up, the freaking newsletter has been massively overhauled in recent weeks. Not only do you get new video alerts, so you don't have to rely on an algorithm to let you know when I posted a video, there's also exclusive articles, there's shopping tips, there's curated finds of products I've tested and liked that are on sale. I don't sell my list and I only send out a couple emails a week and it's free to subscribe, so, so check it out for yourself and see if you like it. Number two, I got channel memberships for those of you who wanna deep dive into extra content that I create. The vibe is a little bit different. I also post weekly videos, which I'm just kind of talking to the camera, telling stories about my life or in general. I also respond to all members' comments on every video. And number three, it's time for you to order some Freakin' Reviews merch. That's right, the Freakin' store is online. I've got shirts, I've got hats, I got all kinds of stuff. So pick up your Freakin' Reviews merch today. And while you're there, the other side of the Freakin' Review store has a curated list of products that I've liked over the years and the links to the best place to purchase them. So bookmark the Freakin' store on your browser today. And now for the first question. Dad Life POV asks, what's the first thing you ever reviewed? The first written review I did, which was like 13 years ago, was for the WaxVac. The first video review I did was on a different channel many years ago. I think it was for Clear TV. Terrible review. And the first one I did for this channel was the Handy Heater. This person says, as far as I know, you don't take sponsorships. That's true. Which is one of the reasons I like your channel and trust your reviews. How and when did you make that decision? How do you feel as it affected your channel? I never really liked the idea of sponsored posts for a review channel because it, it seems to be a conflict of interest. I did do one sponsored post, I think it was about five years ago, and after doing that, I said, no more, that's it, I'm done. Even then, when the company contacted me, I said, I won't do it unless I like the product, so they had to send me one first. But that still didn't seem good enough. I think people want reviews that are unbiased, and to me, a sponsored post is a paid ad. It probably isn't the best business decision in the world, but not the best financial decision in the world, but I think that long-term, it helps my channel's credibility, so that's all that matters to me. Keith Greenway asked, do you ever worry about the YouTube algorithm? It seems like so many YouTubers are in a constant battle with it to maintain the view numbers. I guess I have to kind of keep that in mind a little bit, but you're really, it's really out of your hands. What can you really do? You'll hear some people say the algorithm is really just a synonym for your audience, but I'm not sure I really believe that. I've had, I've had videos that did well that shouldn't. I've had videos that didn't do well that should. The algorithm is completely unpredictable and I can't, I can't really worry about it. All I have to do is continue to put out com content that I'm proud of that I think people will be interested in and hope for the best. But that's one of the reasons I've been expanding my newsletter. So I can bypass algorithms and just go right to the view of them Themselves. If I have a new video, I'll let you know via email. If there's any other information I want to let you know, I'll let you know via email. I don't have to worry about an algorithm. So once again, join my newsletter and bypass algorithms altogether. This person asked, when was the last time you used one of the egg gadgets you reviewed and which gadget was used? It's kind of funny. I've reviewed so many egg gadgets over the years and most of them I don't use. Most of them are kind of unnecessary, really. But surprisingly, one I've used recently, which I didn't think I was going to use, is this one, which is a Crack'em. I really just use it to crack eggs with. It just has that nice sharp edge to it. I don't get egg on my counter or on my stove. Whenever I run my dishwasher, I throw it in there so it always kind of stays clean. So it didn't seem necessary, but I've been using it. Keep it simple, 3856 asks, in a couple of videos, you've worn a Jacksonville shirt. I'm assuming it's Florida. Any connections there? Just curious, I'm from Jacksonville. I would say I have a pretty big connection to Jacksonville because I was born there, that's right. I only lived there until I was about six years old, but you know, that's my birthplace. So I, I went back for the first time Time about three years ago and I really had a kind of nice time visiting my old stomping grounds which I barely remembered so Jacksonville will always have a special place in my heart because that's where I came into the world Jickle Knop asks between the butter bell crock the butter mill and the butter tray which is your preferred way to serve your butter now I think all those work pretty well and I can see why people would choose any of them but for me I've been using the butter tray primarily because that's the easiest one to clean and maintain but also because when I was a kid my parents had something like that so it kind of is nostalgic for me Cottonball2763 asks if I've ever accidentally broke one of my favorite products. Yeah, I did break the uh, the Philips One Blade, which I really like that product a lot. I used it for years, but I dropped it on my tile floor and it broke and it was unrepairable. So I was kind of bummed about that because I really like that one. I also broke my thin optics. Uh, that one snapped in half and I took advantage of their warranty. I got a free replacement and then that ended up breaking too. And I just ended up giving up and going back to regular reading glasses. This person asked, what's my favorite Rush album? I would say the best Rush album is probably Moving Pictures. That's the first one I ever heard. It's, it's you know, start to finish, it's a great album. But if you want to know which one I've listened to the most, maybe it will surprise some Rush fans, but I would say Grace Under Pressure. I think that's kind of an underrated album. But I would say their most underrated album is probably the 2013 remix of Vapor Trails. That album rocks. Fernalicious asks a very important question. What is the saddest of all the keys? There's only one answer to that question, and that is D minor, because it makes people weep instantly. 
I love Spinal Tap. This person asks, have you ever thought about doing a claim or warranty review of some of the products that didn't work or broke? I haven't really gotten too much into that, although I, the Emerald Pan I did. For the Emerald Pan, after the review was over, I did send it in for the warranty and they honored it. So, you know, it's not something I've done often. I've done occasionally. The, the reason I haven't done it a lot is because, number one, most of the products that do actually work, they're just not very good. So I hold on to them or I give them away. Or number two, if they don't work, a lot of times I just exchange them before I even do my review. So there really haven't been a lot of opportunities after my review is over to take advantage of the warranty. It's time for some channel member questions now. First up, what are your favorite YouTube channels? Now, I, I watch a lot of science channels like Arvin Ash, Star Talk, PBS Space Time, true crime channels. <laughs> Anything with Chris Hansen, Peter Zihan, another channel by Rick9G who talks about classic TV. I pretty much watch anything but product reviews because product reviews now feel like work to me. Member Vacmaster1991 asks, are you still using the apartment? You said in a video that everyone moved out. Do you still plan on collabs with your kids? I haven't had that apartment for about a year now. And so obviously I won't be using that anymore. And my, both of my kids moved out of state. So I don't see them as often as I would like. But Brandon will do an occasional collaboration when he comes to visit. Member question, favorite concerts you've been to? I guess depending on how you look at it, either fortunately or unfortunately, the best concert I ever went to was the first concert I went to, which was the US Festival, May 29th, 1983. Yeah, well, I went to Metal Day. The bands in order were Quiet Riot, Motley Crue, Ozzy Osbourne, Judas Priest, Triumph Scorpions, and Van Halen. All of them in the prime. How can you beat that? I still have my ticket stub, by the way. It was only 20 bucks. This member asks, what are my top three favorite casinos here in Vegas? The ones I like to go to, I go to Green Valley Ranch because it's in Henderson, kind of off strip, kind of nearby. Another off strip one I like is Sam's Town. I just kind of like the vibe there. I like their big atrium and they've got kind of a little bit of everything. They have a bowling alley, a movie theater, pretty much everything you want there. So I, I think the one I go to the most is Green Valley Ranch. When I go to the Strip, I still like the New York, New York. I just like the architecture there. I just, I, the vibe of there is really cool. It's not the newest, not, not the fanciest, but it's the one I like to go to the most. Mike asks, do you still use the Presto Pizzazz pizza oven? I don't use that one anymore. I used it for a couple years though. Gotta say, I'm a little bit impressed by this. I'm a lot impressed by it. I have so many appliances coming and going, I eventually needed the counter space, but it had a pretty good run for a couple of years. This person asks, how in the heck are you almost 60? I ask myself that all the time. It seems like just yesterday, I was 21 years old and it was 1989 and I had a big giant camcorder on my shoulder. Here I am in my 50s doing the same thing with a little bit better camera. I don't know, man, time flies. Finish the story one wants to know what the best food product I've tried so far is. Recently, I for a member's video, I did some pumpkin pie ice cream. That was spectacular. That was really good. There are white and orange chunks in there. Let's see. Mmm, mmm. Now review wise, I actually on JC Klein's channel, I did the Taco Bell cheese at Tostada. I really like those. I ordered them every single time I went there until they stopped selling them. Those are two recent examples. I'm gonna kind of combine a couple questions here. Retro Charge asks, can we hear a, some rad guitar licks on your next Q&A? While Zardox2 asks, a few years of asking, but I wanna see some pics from your band days. So I'll combine those two. I'll show some pictures of me back when I was in a band. And in the background, I'll play a song where you can hear me prominently on the bass guitar. Michael has an interesting question. He asks, what's the worst product you ever reviewed then went back to actually using it? Now that one got me thinking, how many products have I actually not liked originally and ended up using? The first example I can think of were Hot Hands, which I think ended up on my worst of the year list, my first worst of the year back in 2017. But my son liked them and he, he kept using them and he kind of convinced me to like them over time. The reason I didn't like them is because their advertising claims were ridiculous. And that's what I was, that's the standard I was holding it to. Oh, it's starting to feel warm. Ah! <laughs> Once I forget about the advertising claims, I realized they weren't that bad. Uncle Ham 204 asks, why do you always talk with your hands? Well, let me try without my hands and see how that goes. Welcome back everybody. Now today I've got five kitchen gadgets by request. Let's get right to it. I can't do that. I got to get into these reviews. I have to be excited about it. I have to be animated. I have to jump into it. And these are the only limbs I have to move around. So that's why. Red Guy 1661 asks, what is my favorite snack? It's, it's kind of funny. I actually had this conversation recently. I think if I could live just on cheese, I would do that. Or dry roasted peanuts or sunflower seeds that are already out of the shell. Those three are just deadly to me. 
I like them a little bit too much, I think. This person asked, would I be open to testing more storage gadgets? I mean, I've looked at storage gadgets over the years. It would be something I would if it was something unique or kind of weird about it. There was a suitcase going around that I, I, I continue to want to pull the trigger on. I haven't yet. There was also kind of an interesting ornament storage gadget that I almost bought. I don't know why I didn't. Storage gadget is kind of off my radar. Maybe I'll look into that a little bit more in the future and see what I can come up with. Another music question. Someone asks, who do you want to be the next Dance Gavin Dance clean vocalist? I say bring back Kurt Travis. He was great the first time around. Of course, he's always busy doing a bunch of projects. I guess my other choice, since Good Tiger hasn't put out an album in like four years, get Elliot Coleman. That guy's an amazing singer. Rich San Diego 1969 asks, what's your biggest win at a casino? I don't really gamble much. I, I only gamble on a rare occasion because I'd rather blow my money on other things than that. I think that maybe the most money I ever won at a casino was maybe 500 bucks. I, I, I'm kind of a cheap gambler and I don't gamble often, so I haven't had many opportunities to win much at all. This person asks, I've been recently seeing ads about the Bark Box and remember that you did a review. Do you still subscribe to it? Let me see what we got here. Peanut butter carobs. That sounds good to me. I don't suppose people can eat these, right? Believe it or not, I have still maintained my subscription ever since I did that review years ago. That was August of 2020. Four years later, I still get it every month and Bailey looks forward to it. She knows that box. When it shows up, she gets excited. Part of our daily routine is her playing with her, a bunch of her toys. She likes the crinkly squeaky kinds. And when she gets tired, I pile all of them on top of her. It's kind of a fun thing we do. Most of them are bark box toys. This person wants to know if there's ever been a time when I wanted to buy something, not for a review but I either postponed or brought the purchase forward in order to fit with an upload schedule. Off the top of my head, I recently bought an iced tea maker I wasn't planning on reviewing, but I ended up doing for members because I, I, I thought it would be fun to try out. <laughs> Last gasp of steam. Oh, uh, the Bluetooth and label maker. I didn't buy that one for a review either, and I ended up reviewing it. And the wrapping gadgets last year, I think the wrapping buddies, I, I didn't buy those to review, but they ended up being kind of an interesting product to review. This person asks, has a product you reviewed caused serious injury or illness? Fortunately, I've only got a few cuts and scrapes along the way over the years. Oh, and I just cut my finger. I've had a few food items that kind of made me sick to my stomach though. But now I'm gonna go rest my stomach because this is gonna come back to haunt me in a little while. I can, I can tell already. The worst thing is trying to film when I'm injured or, or hurting. I throw my back out a couple times a year and there's been a few times I've tried to film while having back spasms. That's not fun. ACDC2798 asks, does it ever feel like a chore to do a review? I go into every review looking forward to it and excited about this new product I'm testing out. Sometimes though a product ends up being a chore, like it takes a couple of weeks to do it or there's a lot of steps to it or it becomes a much bigger task than it should be. There's times my review that I feel like I've just spent a lot of time on a review that isn't really that interesting. They don't always feel like a chore going into them, but sometimes before it's over, it became a chore. Bethany Skinner's 9741 asks, can you give Bailey a treat from all of us? Let's go find her. As I was getting the package, she found me. Today's treat is the Gobble Jerky Bars from BarkBox. Oh, and she's already sitting nicely, she knows. Ready? There you go. Good girl. Karen Hackney 9920 asks, have you reviewed any high-tech gadgets, cameras, TVs, monitors, or small appliances? I typically avoid tech gadgets because there's already channels out there that specialize in that and they have a much more broad understanding. They have a lot more experience with a wide variety of tech gadgets. So I don't really delve too much in that. I've done a few over the years, but not that many. This person asks if I've ever been to Germany or somewhere else in Europe. If not, I'm invited. I have not been to Europe yet. I'd love to go there. You know, there's a lot of places I would like to visit. If I ever do go there, I'll almost certainly go to Germany. So maybe I'll take you up on your offer. I don't know when, it, if or when it's ever going to happen. It'll probably be on a whim. So hopefully I get over there sooner than later. Well, that's it for this q and I appreciate all those of you who watched, liked, and subscribed. If I didn't get to your question this time, I'll be doing more Q&As in 2025. I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you next time.